welcome to another episode. Today we're going to be talking about PID loops. We're going to break it into two parts. The first part is going to be a conceptual, and the second time we're going to talk about how to actually do it in the software. Give a couple extra notes, and that should be it. Before we dive in too deeply, let's set up what we're trying to accomplish. Let's say we have a fan and a motor that turns the fan. We have a drive, let's say it's a C200, and we have a potentiometer. In a basic system, you would connect the potentiometer to the drive and the drive to the motor. And the potentiometer would control the speed of the motor directly through the drive. Let's say that's not what we want to do. Let's say we want to maintain a pressure on the output side of the fan. To do that, we added a pressure transducer, and then we connect the pressure transducer to the drive. Inside the drive, there is a PID. The PID is a proportional integral and differential controller. All three of these are used to tune the PID. Most systems don't use differential and only use proportional and some integral. In order to set up our system to accomplish our goals, there is more to this PID that we need to talk about. On the output side of the PID, there is something called a feed forward reference. We will not be using it in this application, but it is used in applications where you don't want the PID to control the system 100%. You only want it to trim the speed. An example of this would be a dancer arm. Also on the output side of the drive, there are max and min limits. These are used to limit the output of the PID. This can be used to limit the max speed and the min speed of the motor. For example, you probably don't want your fan running in reverse, so you would set the minimum speed to zero and the max speed to 60 hertz. Let's see how to set up the input side of the PID loop. The potentiometer is mapped to the reference and the pressure transducer is mapped to the feedback. The reference and the feedback are subtracted from each other. This produces the air. The air is what the PID uses to trim the speed. Everything inside here is the PID loop in menu 14. To make more room on the screen, let's rearrange the display. All right. So here is our menu 14 PID loop system. You can see it looks the same, except I added a little bit of data. I listed the parameter numbers for the feedback and for the reference and for the output of the PID block. So let's talk about wiring the drive. I'm gonna use everything on the left side of the screen to represent stuff inside of the drive and everything on the right side of the screen to represent the wiring and the outside world. To wire the pressure transducer, you're going to wire it to terminal number 2. The value of the pressure transducer will show up in parameter 7.001 as a percentage. The analog value will then be sent to whatever destination is in parameter 7.010 or 7.010. To wire up the potentiometer, we're going to wire it to terminal number 5. This is analog number two. Its value will show up in parameter 7.002 also as a percentage, and it will send whatever's in 7.002 to the destination found in 7.014. So what we need to do now is map the analog one to the feedback and map analog two to the reference of the PID block. To do that, all we do is type in the parameter number in the destination blocks. The input side of the PID is now complete. As you can see, the output of the PID loop is not set up, indicated by the question marks. Now this output could be mapped to many locations in the drive. One common location is the preset speed references. I'm going to use preset speed reference number one. Parameter 1.21 is the location for this preset speed reference. In the drive, there are many preset speed references. You need to make sure that you have number one selected. The next thing you need to do is set parameter 1.014 to presets. That tells the drive that we're going to be taking our speed reference from the preset references. 
the drive will block the references if the run command is not on. After you give the drive a run command, the drive will send the speed that you have selected to the RAMs. Now here you can see that there are two parameters listed, 2.11 and 2.21. Both of these values need to be very small. If they are not, they will interfere with the PID loop. However, some people use a very small value as a filter. We're going to set up this PID we just talked about really quickly using the actual Connect software. As you can see right here, I have a C200 drive. You can see that over here on the right side of the screen under properties. You can also see that I named it C200. The first thing we need to do is go under the block diagrams. You could do this under parameters, but I like the block diagrams better for what we're doing. So the first thing we're going to do is map the analog inputs to the appropriate locations of the PID block. Menu 7 is where we can find the analog inputs. The first analog input you see right here, we said we were going to connect it to our pressure transducer. And so we're going to send the destination of the analog input to 14.026. The second analog input we were going to use for our potentiometer. And we're going to set it to our PID reference. To do that, we're going to map it to 14.025. Okay. And the next thing we're going to do is come over here to our PID controller. We're going to map the output side of this to our preset references. Okay, that's parameter 121. As you can see, that's 01 represents menu 1, and 21 is the preset for uh, preset 1. Yep. Yeah. And if we come down here to the PID controller right here in this block, um, you will find that there is a PID enable. I did not talk about this previously, but you should have this on. You may not want it on all of the time. For example, you might want to tie a digital input to this enable or a piece of code. Um, for example, if the drive is disabled or tripped, there's no reason having your PID running. You could also enable and disable this, tying it to drive healthy and active so that it automatically uh, disables itself. Now you'll notice that there's three of them here. If you don't map these two, it just assumes that it's true on this end block. And so this is the only one you have to actually control. If you map this somewhere, uh, for example, uh, 10.001, which is drive healthy, that not only would it, the drive need to be healthy, but this would also have to be enabled in order for the PID to run. Um, most of the time I don't use drive healthy. If I was to use something, I'd probably use drive active, which is this 10.002. As you can see, when I put my mouse over the parameter, um, that way when you remove the run command, it automatically uh, disables the PID. If you come back here, we have everything pretty much set up. We did talk about setting the lower clamp to zero. Now you're gonna notice that this says 100 here. This is actually in percentage. And in the earlier part of the video, I talked about saying 60 Hertz. Um, no, you wouldn't do that because the way the PID works is it auto scales everything based on the parameter you're sending it to. So this parameter right here, this is parameter 121, which is a preset speed reference. If I come over, to uh, that parameter and looked at it, it would say its maximum value is 60 hertz because the rest of the drive is set up to 60 hertz. So 100% here would output 60 hertz here automatically. So it's just a percentage of whatever this full uh, scale is, okay? Um, the last thing we're gonna look at is over here in the source. We're just going to look at this again. So this right here is the PID reference. We set this up. If we go back to our analog, you'll notice that our analog input number two, 1425, is mapped right here. 
and the data will flow right through up until it gets to this uh, subtraction block. And then it shows you the error here, right? And the same thing happens here, 14, 26. Uh, this parameter here, we have analog one, right? Tied to it. And so it's getting the pressure feedback through this branch of the uh, input here. And you'll notice that you can actually invert it if your PID acts backwards, or you can even scale it a little bit here, right? So that's kind of nice. Um, but most of the time you'll leave this alone. Sometimes it is kind of nice to slew the reference in case uh, you don't want to um, make abrupt changes as someone's twisting the potentiometer. You don't want it to, you know, go crazy. You can add a little bit of slew. Basically it just slows down the rate of change that this is. So anyways, if we come back out this way, here's the output scaling if you want to do some more of it. And this is where you tune it, proportional, and here's your integral. Now, are we done? Of course not. Uh, there was a couple steps we haven't done yet. If we go back to menu one, uh, we we'll come down here. We need to select presets because the preset is where we're trying to get our speed reference from. If we follow it back here, we need to set this to preset one. And that is everything. So the PID outputs here, it comes through this line. It follows on through down this way, it comes on out. It goes through this logic here. Basically what this is doing is if it's given a run command in menu six, then it lets it go through. If it doesn't have a run command through menu six, it basically prevents the reference from going through. Um, and then here's our ramps. We want really fast ramp. It might be just better to disable the ramps completely, but I'm gonna add a, just a little bit of ramp just because, and that is it. We are completely set up. If you have any more questions about how to do this, please post them in the comment section below. Hey, it looks like you made it to the end of the episode. If you liked it and would like us to keep making more, please subscribe, comment, and watch others. This helps us know that the content's good. And uh, as always, see you next time.